Hey, hi, ho, welcome to the show. My name is Will. This is Hard City Raindrops. You guys have been tuned in to episode 7. By the way, YouTube, you're watching this, right? Um, this is not the whole episode. You are, you are not going to get the whole episodes of the podcast through YouTube any longer. You're only going to get bits and pieces, okay? If you want the full podcast, go to my Apple iTunes Type in Hard City Raindrops in the search. You will find me. I'm there. Uh, you can listen to the whole thing. Or like some of you have been streaming off of Podbean, which is fine too. Totally fine. Works great for Android users. And we are going to talk about things that we still like that we've been fascinated with as children. Like little, little toy trucks and little fire trucks and stuff and dump trucks and, you know, boats Stuff like that, that like still to this day, it's just like it's a very manly thing or like, I mean even women like these things too, but like it's just, they're just cool. There's just something about it. And some of us went about these things as careers and some of us still just think it's cool. So let's talk about those kind of things, shall we? So for me, my father um, was a volunteer firefighter at a ladder company in a, in a dumpster of a town called Croydon. Um, no offense to anybody from there, but anyway, um, a dumpster from a, from a dumpster fire of a town. It's gotten better now, but back in the day, it was like pretty bad. Um, anyway, my father was a volunteer firefighter there. He was a, uh, fire police so he basically just directed traffic and I think he drove the truck which that would make him the pump operator but it was the ladder truck he was on so um, this ladder truck did not have the wheel in the back which was called something I forget um, what was that wheel called I couldn't I can't remember but that guy was always the one who was up the ladder first so I tend to know some things about fire trucks because growing up I grew up in Ladder 11 in Croydon, PA, and I grew up um, in Engine 51 or 52 in Bristol, PA, where my uncle worked, and that was a small little firehouse. I want to say it was 51, Engine 51. It had a field engine, a regular pump engine. So fire trucks for me were probably the biggest, the biggest thing, I, I think, for, for me. And I think a lot of guys can relate to that because like, um, and maybe even women too, maybe there's some women firefighter, EMT slash whatever, cops even, who the fire truck started at all because it made a lot of noise. It was big, red, shiny, chrome wheels, and they just were awesome. They were just, everything about a fire truck is cool. And they are so, you know, back in the day, <laughs> they originated from just a sled and then they moved up to the horse but even before that it was just guys with bucket a bucket line and you would just pass buckets of water through a line of people and that's how they put up at the fires until you know 18 whoever oh i don't know actually but <clears throat> excuse me it's crazy to think how how not that long ago it was when they were just you know pulling a big heavy steam engine with a horse, you know, but the horses were getting beat up, so they had to come up with something, and they had the steam engine. But the steam engines weren't really great. They didn't. They weren't reliable. They caught, they actually caught fire themselves, caused a lot of problems, and hurt a lot of firefighters in in the beginning. So it wasn't really until the diesel engine of the fire truck that they really started to, you know, utilize that firehouses and counties and cities. And I think, I think it went by like how many buildings you had and how tall the tallest building was it is if you got a bucket or not, or what kind of money the government would give that town towards, you know, a tax taxes for the firehouse, depending on, you know, if you live in a town like where I live, and where I grew up in Ben Salem, or well, Bristol, there was a, a factory that had that was in need of a bucket ladder truck like that. So that's why they had it. So I think it depends on all that and, um, you know, stuff like that. But I'm not really sure. So 
growing up, I remember used to, me and my friends in Bristol used to, um, their father was chief. My uncle was the assistant chief. And we used to just hang out at the firehouse all summer long. It's all we did. We, we used to park our bikes in a parking lot across the street. And, and park our bikes and line them up like we had our own little firehouse. And when that fire alarm used to go off, and it would wake up the whole entire neighborhood, it would be 1 o'clock in the morning, and I would run down the stairs in my pajamas and everything, like I was going to go fight this fire. And my mom was like, what are you doing, child? Get back in bed. <laughs> but I was obsessed. Never became a firefighter, although I, I really always kind of wanted to. I was kind of thinking about this year getting into Fire One, maybe, but I just got too many things going on right now to be where to you know do fire, uh, you know, volunteer fire classes in Fire One and whatever. Wildland firefighting in in Pennsylvania is is a a real thing too that I was thinking of. So, but fire trucks are just one of those things that I just don't think leaves any man's head, and. Uh, that, you know, they just have so much history, they have so much, they're so cool looking with the lights everywhere, and the chrome, and the, the bell, and the horn, and the air horn, and just the way they sound, and when they go by, even when the lights are off, the, the chains, you know, that chain sound they make, this is cool, it's just cool to think about that. So, and then, I, like, the next thing for me, I think, would be the fighter jet. The fighter jet is one of those things where it's like, you know, that's something you always dream to be, a fighter pilot, I think. Like, every kid wanted to be a fighter jet. I think especially like when Top Gun came out, like the fighter jet, you know, like the F-14 Super Hornets or what do they have? What's the thing now? I think... Um, the st when the st remember when the stealth bomber first came out, I mean, when it first came out, it's like, that was the coolest thing, but, like, you know, the newer jets that Lockheed Martin, uh, designed, F-35C, or I guess it's, I'm not really sure it's the difference between the C or the F-35, but the, the F-35s are just a, a crazy, ridiculous machine, although, you know, I don't know if they had a problem with those or some kind of issue with them they had. The F-35, but it's the future, you know, those things are like the future of combat. I mean, they're unbelievable what they can do. So, but being a, a fighter pilot, you had, you know, in the Air Force, you had to be like perfect height and weight and, you know, eyesight and everything, which I could have probably did. I just, you know, to do the pre-checks is what you got to focus on for piloting. You know, anybody could really kind of fly the plane, but the, the prep part, it's just like a CDL. When you have the CDL for a truck, you know, being safe in the truck is the number one thing. So when you're flying an aircraft, being safe and, and prepping for flight and pre-flight track checks, just like a pre-trip inspection for a tractor trailer, it's, it's really no different. It's just a book that's probably 10,000 more pages bigger and a lot more information that you need to know. You know, because you're checking everything now. You're checking, you know, wing adjustments and fuel line, you know, mixtures and all kinds of crap like that. I mean, I'm speaking out of way above my head now. I have no idea. I mean, could UFOs be in that category? Are some of us could be into... I mean, well, yeah, I guess we could talk about the shuttle missions. These are huge. Yes, absolutely. Why didn't I put this down? The shuttle missions are absolutely the coolest because the thing about the shuttles that I think is the most intriguing is the fact that they didn't have an engine <laughs> they're just gliders that's what they are and they were just giant hand gliders attached to a rocket that's how they got to space oh they did have an engine they did have an engine because they flew around in space so you know what I never really understood about space and maybe it's because I'm not an astrophysicist but um, like, how does a, how does propulsion work in space? Like, because there's no gravity. So, like, if there's zero gravity, how does that thing move? How does an object move from one place to another 
with just propulsion. What is it? What is it propulsing through? Or how do you? You know, it's just like a bullet. Like if you shoot a bullet in space, is it gonna work? Or do you need some kind of a laser? Like I just don't really understand that part of it. So I I want to, but I don't. Because <laughs> I'm not smart enough. Like I'm not. Like I love physics and I love science and I love astronomy. I love astrophysics. Uh, but I I I. Not smart enough. I, I, I'm not smart enough. And I know I'm not, but I love it and I'm interested in it and I want to know things about it. So if there is a scientist who watches and listens, please comment below where I can find that kind of information out. Maybe there's a podcast you know of that teaches you these things. I would be happy to listen. So, yeah, the rockets would be probably right up with that too. And now SpaceX, what they're creating, their rockets now, the new Space SX rockets look like something right out of a freaking Bugs Bunny cartoon. I mean, seriously, look at these things. And one of them fell over, I think I saw, right? One fell over and a wing got it. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh my God. So I have a friend who works at SpaceX. I almost took a job there last year. I was either going to have to go to Hawthorne, California, or... Um, was it Kennedy Space Center is somewhere in Florida I forget but the pay wasn't great and uh, they wanted me to paint the rockets I was gonna be a rocket painter for Elon Musk but I just that kind of, of a move it was before I had a dog it was about last year I was really thinking about it It was after actually it was still a while I was in the police academy stuff so I wasn't a hundred percent with on board with it it was just, it was there, it's still there. It's just, I, I don't wanna paint rockets. I mean, that's, you're thinking about painting a, a truck that I paint now, an 18 wheelers bed. You're, you're talking about a rocket that's like huge, like a like 15 story big or whatever. Don't quote me on how big it is. I know so many people are like, oh, that's inaccurate. Look, they're big. And they get them painted in sections, which they're still huge. So the rockets, the shuttles, absolutely. And not only that, but the big heavy machinery that just moves those rockets in. The tow, the towing, and tow trucks. Anything that moves things that are bigger than what they are is amazing to me. Like that thing that you see, oh, I don't know how many of you saw it. So I, I fall into the rabbit hole of heavy machinery all the time on YouTube. And um, there's this machine that goes on bridges and builds bridges by lifting the heavy center blocks and it goes across and then it has a counterweight that goes in and well it's not a counterweight but the thing goes across and it catches to the stanchion and then once it once they bolt it or whatever they do to the stanchion um, the rest of the machine comes out farther and then it brings out the big center block chunk of road which they then build and then build I-beams and asphalt and everything else. But it's really cool and um, that is a, an amazing piece of machinery. So, but beyond rockets and heavy things like that, I have a fascination with police cars that just has been with me since I was a very small child and I think that stems back to, I mean, as, as long as I can remember, something with lights on it. As far as the fire truck, at least, but now we're talking cars. So, for me, um, it's always going to be Ferrari. You know, I and sometimes I'll talk about Lamborghini. Like I do want a Lamborghini, and um, it is a goal of mine to have a Lamborghini um, soon. Like in the next five years, I want a Lamborghini. Um, you know, I want a, an Aventador. But I, I think I'm just going to be able to get a Huracan at this point, at, in five years, a Lamborghini Huracan. Because they're only 176000 or so. If, you know, and you can, get, you can get one. I mean, you can get one if you really work hard, you put your mind to it, you can get one. Like, some people might be fucking laughing, whatever. But, like, if I work my ass off and I save up and, and I can get the payments to a minimum, I can get a Lamborghini. I mean, it's, I can get, it's going to be used. And it's going to cost me probably 500 a month. But I'm saying, that's what I want. And I also want to vlog with it. So, but, you know, Ferrari was my, my childhood hero of cars. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about exotic cars. Because 
the Ferrari F430 Spider is probably my favorite, but um, that's not the class. Like the old classic Ferraris, I like too. I just and there's something about the name Ferrari. It's like when you say it, it's just it sounds sexy, right? It's like sex. That's like, that that car just sounds like I want to have sex with that car. Like that's what that sounds like. It's not like Toyota or like Honda, Ferrari. I mean, you're literally saying sex out loud. That's what it sounds like. Like I'm a fucking man. I'm a king. That's what that says. Ferrari. There's nothing better than it. There's nothing better than that language that comes out of your mouth. Ferrari. Just say it. Say it. Ferrari. It's so beautiful. It's a beautiful language of a word. A Lamborghini. I mean, who the hell thought of this? Well, Lamborghini is the last name of a guy who actually made farm tractors. And if you don't know the story of Lamborghini and how they became about, allow me to enlighten you. From what I understand, and I could be wrong, Ferrari had bad clutches and horrible, horrible clutches. And they kept blowing clutches. And um, Lamborghini, for, uh, Lamborghini, whoever Lamborghini, had farm tractors and his wife owned a Ferrari. Or as he owned, or him and his wife owned a Ferrari. Um, Italians, obviously, in Italy, <laughs> and they had a Ferrari that blew clutches left and right, so they put, um, they had farm tractors in it, and they had, they had Lamborghinis, they were making farm tractors, and they owned a Ferrari, and they get, were blowing cl clutches, and they said, these clutches suck, so they made their own clutch for the Ferrari, so for the longest time, I think, that's how the story, from what I understand it, I think, came about when they were like, something happened or, you know, they were buying their clutches off of Lamborghini and there were Lamborghini clutches in Ferraris for the longest time from what I know, the history of it. But I, this could be all wrong. This is just what I heard, I think. I might have just dreamed this whole thing, but somebody can correct me. That's fine. But from what I know, um, that's how Lamborghini got its start because they were just like, well, why, are we, why don't we just build our own car? And Lamborghini was born. And thus, my love for exotic cars started with the Lamborghini Diablo SV. Blue. <clears throat> and, you know, I loved Ferrari. And then you had the Ferrari Enzos and the, uh, what's the one? The La Ferraris. And the, there were just so many beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cars. Lamborghini Diablos, the Huracans, the Aventadors, now the Marcialagos and the um, the Galados are okay, but a lot of people don't consider the Galado an actual Lamborghini because they don't open like Lamborghini doors. It's like the fake Lamborghini. It's a poor man's Lamborghini. Listen, if you have a Lamborghini, I think you're okay. You're not poor. Although you could have a Lamborghini and I guess end up poor. <laughs> So I want a Ferrari or a Lamborghini in five years. I mean, if it's used, it's going to be used. I'm not going to go get a brand new $500,000 Lamborghini anything unless I really, you know, get big on YouTube and podcasts and make Joe Rogan money or something. But like, you know, PewDiePie money because, you know, my life evolves around very small minimalistic things, but I love exotic cars and I have this love for them. And I, I want one before I die. It's on my bucket list to own a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. Probably a Ferrari. I'm more of a Ferrari guy. This The sound of them is better. They might not be better. I know Lamborghinis are a lot tougher and stronger. But, and, and that's just what I know from watching a lot of exotic guys drive these cars and whoop on them. Like Daily Driven Exotics YouTube channel. They, they really drive the hell out of them cars. So anyway, that is where my fascination with those, with things that are just big, fast, and powerful sound beautiful and are, are just, they symbolize everything that symbolizes masculinity and it's very healthy for you guys. And I think you should go back to that childhood and I hope this takes you there. I hope that's what this podcast does. I hope it takes you back to that time to where you were looking at a crane as a child and being like, I want to be the guy that operates that. And then you became that person, you know, you became that person. Or, you know, you had, you were playing police cars and 
you know, with your toy cars and you smash the car. Remember the car door with the cars? It smashed the doors together and the door would flip and it was a smashed door. I mean, self-consciously, maybe that's what turned me into a collision guy and a painter. You know, the smashed door that used to spin around, it was a smashed door and you could flip it back around, it would be fixed. Oh, I'll never forget that Hot Wheels car. I have a friend named uh, Jay. He collects these Hot Wheels. You know, he got a lot of them in the package still. If I was smart enough to do that, I'd probably be buying a Lamborghini with those because some of them things are worth big buck, big bucks that I had. You know, original ones and stuff. I mean, they're talking about in the 80s when I was a kid in 84. And these, this is the hot time when Hot Wheels were coming out. Big time in that time. Period. These cars you can't get no more. They're made out of junk made in China. I'm talking about American-made Hot Wheels cars. Then it all starts there with the dump trucks, the fire trucks, the ambulances, police cars, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, cranes, whatever it is. It, it all starts with the Hot Wheels, honestly. This whole thing, I might just label this Hot Wheels. <laughs> because that's where it all starts, man. And uh, like I said, I hope, I really hope that this podcast just brings a different vibe to this podcast as a whole because, you know, yesterday's podcast was kind of a shit one. Um, I'm happy with it. I thought about deleting it because I don't want negative energy, but it's also, it needed to be talked about. So that's why I did that. But, um, you know, I don't delete things. It's, it's staying. It is what it is. Um, so yeah, I hope this uh, episode brings some joy back into your life as a man or a woman, whatever, it doesn't really matter. We do not judge here at the Hard City. Um, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode. And thank you for joining podcast episode seven. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.